Today, we're going to be looking at a very interesting theory called leadership exchange theory. And this theory is interesting because for a lot of people, this causes the lights to come on and they can understand why they've had some good successes or some miserable failures in different work situations they've been in. So it's going to be a good theory that helps explain some of the things that you might already have experienced, but it's also a good theory because it also gives you ways to to, to move forward in organizations, both as a subordinate as and as a leader. Now, let's talk about leadership mem leader member exchange theory. Now, the abbreviation for leader member exchange theory is LMX, uh, kind of a, a, a cute way of abbreviating leader member exchange. And loves, usually it's just called LMX because it, it shortens the title a lot there. Now, LMX is different than the other theories that we've been looking at so far um, because it views leadership as a process. And so what it's doing is it's focusing on the interactions between a leader and subordinates. It's not something, uh, it's not saying that leadership is predicted by um, the leader or by the subordinate, but by the interactions that they have. Now, this is in contrast to some of the other theories that we've looked at. Um, some theories that we've looked at have focused on the characteristics and behaviors of leaders, the, um, the people with authority, uh, such as the trade approach, skills approach, and the style approach. That was all focused on the characteristics and behaviors of the person with positional power. Um, other theories that we've looked at focus on the characteristics of the follower and the context, things outside of the leader. And that included situational leadership, contingency theory, and path goal theory. This theory is focusing on the interactions between the leader and subordinates. Now, in its simplest form, the, the LMX looks at what they call vertical dyads and the linkage between vertical uh, dyads. We, uh, um, in this diagram, L is the leader. In fact, there's only one leader. This L is the same person. But as the leader goes from subordinate to subordinate, subordinate A, subordinate B, all the way to how many ever subordinates uh, um, uh, are under the, the leader, there's exchanges. And so there's um, interactions between the first subordinate and there's a set of interactions between the, the second. And between each subordinate, there's a set of interactions that kind of define the, uh, the relationship or the vertical dyad linkage. Now, these interactions may be what we call high quality or low quality, good or bad, the way that we'd like them to be, or maybe suboptimal. And so uh, what we can do is that we can look at all of these uh, uh, vertical linkage dyads and say that, aha, the leader has really good exchanges with subordinate A, um, when the leader uh, talks to subordinate A, oh, um, subordinate A benefits, and when, ben and when the subordinate A benefits to or talks to the leader, um, interacts with the leader, the leader benefits. And so we're giving plus three to each arrow. And same thing with subordinate B, subordinate C also. They all have real positive uh, relationships. And the leader forms a trusting relationship. The, the leader likes the subordinates. The subordinate tends to like the leaders. Uh, they're open to influence from one another. They're, they're good relationships. However, there's other subordinates that things don't go as well with. And these are subordinates X, Y, and Z. The leader and the subordinate, in this case, they're just kind of neutral interactions. The leader does what he or she has to do, and the subordinate responds with uh, what he or she has to do. There's no real mutual benefit going on. Things are kind of defined by the contract that exists between them. And here we've got zeros as they're kind of neutral interactions. Now, we could also say sometimes there's, there's negative interactions. And in, in, in the, when the leader interacts with the subordinate, the subordinate says, oh, no, not again. I don't, I don't want to avoid them. Or the same thing when the subordinate acts with the leader, the leader might say, oh, I'd rather avoid them too. And what we can do with these different uh, uh, 
the way when we look at the the quality of relationships there's some people that have a good relationship with the leader and in this model this is called the leaders in group and the people that don't have the high quality exchanges with the leader are called the uh, um, the out group now they're all they all have the same so um, the the same superior, the same leader, the same boss, but the boss has better relationships, better exchanges with some people than other. And now, if you think about it, you've probably seen that happen in real life. Now, this isn't saying that this is what's supposed to happen. It's just saying this is what happens: is that there's this in group that the leader uh, um, is close to, and then there's the out group that the leader's not uh, close to. Here's a here's another way of looking at uh, the in group and the out group. Here we've only got we've got the one leader, and we've got a bunch of subordinates. They're all around here, and the leader that has the has real positive, frequent, encouraging interactions with a, a, a one group are considered the in group. The others, he has less interaction with. It's less positive. They're less close. They just come to job to get. The, come to work to get their job done. The leader gives them the minimum amount of information. Um, this is the out group. Now for the in group, they've got, they're closer to the leader, they've got more information, there's greater confidence in the leader, the leader has more confidence in, in them. Um, they, it turns out that research indicates that this in group is becomes more dependable, more involved in work, more communicative than the people in the uh, out group. And so the idea of uh, LMX is that, ooh, if there's all these positive things that happen from being in the leader's in group, the leader needs to try to get everybody in his or her in group. So when, when the leader can have the high quality positive exchanges with uh, other people, they come into uh, his or her in-group. And research has shown that there's a lot of things that happen when they have these high quality positive exchanges with their leader. There's less employee turnover. There's more the, there's more positive performance evaluations. There's higher frequency of promotions. So like it's like everybody benefits from uh, these uh, positive uh, um, exchanges. There's greater organizational commitment, more desirable work assignments, better job attitudes. It's just like everybody's happier when uh, there's these positive uh, uh, leader member exchanges. Um, the the subordinates that have the positive uh, uh, exchanges get more attention and support from the leader. Greater, they participate more in uh, the work that they're doing. They're more engaged, and they even have faster career pr uh, progress. They uh, they're the ones that are going to be the next uh, um, generation, the next uh, the ones most likely to get uh, promotions. And so there's a because there's a result. This is the result of these exchanges between the leader and subordinate, and it's a two-directional thing. It's not just dependent on the leader, it's also dependent on the subordinate. We can say that these exchanges are leadership making. It's not just what the leader does, it's not just what the membership, the member does, but leadership occurs when these exchanges, uh, um, uh, these positive exchanges, pen positive beneficial exchanges occur. That's, uh, so we can say that uh, these this is uh, leadership making. So how does uh, LMX theory uh, work? How can you apply it? First of all, prescriptively, describing what should happen. This means that leaders should try to nurture high quality exchanges with all the subordinates. They shouldn't just say, oh, this is my in-group that I like. I'll have high quality exchanges with them. The leader should try to get everybody into his or her in-group. And rather than concentrating on differences, like, oh, these are good workers, these are bad workers, the leader needs to focus on ways to build the trust and respect with all subordinates, resulting in the entire network uh, becoming the, uh, the in-group. So that's the, the goal, is to get everybody into that in-group, that trust, that hard-working uh, uh, group that's committed to the same goals and that's mutually beneficial to, uh, to one another in their interactions. Now, this can also be used diagnostically. Um, if you're in some situation, you can kind of evaluate what the future holds for your situation. Um, you can look at your, the interactions that you're having with your uh, um, superior and find out kind of what your future uh, is likely to hold in store for you.
So we can say that the quality of subordinates' interactions with their supervisors indicates the likelihood of their advancing in the organization. If you've got a supervisor that you're not close to, that's not paying much attention to you, that doesn't seem to trust you, there's a good chance that you're not going to go very far in the organization. But if you have a supervisor that you're close to, that you have positive exchanges with, um, that there's this, a lot of this trust, um, that's a good predictor that uh, things will, uh, uh, you'll have a, um, uh, the, the, your, the a promotion is, is more likely than, than not. So some of the strengths of this theory is that, first of all, it kind of like validates our experience of how uh, people within organizations relate to each other. We've had this experience where it's like, oh, it's a disaster with that person. No matter how much I try, they're not going to like me or trust me. Um, yep, that happens. Uh, it takes two people to form, uh, to, to bring a person within uh, uh, an in-group. And if there's one person that doesn't want to be, want the other person to be in that in-group, uh, uh, it'll be impossible for the one person to uh, uh, do it by himself or herself. And so these in-groups and these out-groups uh, exist. And you, you might have uh, experienced that. Um, this is uh, another strength of uh, LMX. It's the only leadership approach that makes the, the dyadic relationship that between the two people the center of the leadership process. And the LMX theory points to the importance of communication in leadership. We haven't talked too much about communication, but uh, in LMX, it's this question of positive communication, positive interactions between the two uh, people that predict uh, uh, how much leadership will be given and how well the, the goals of the organization will be accomplished. Another strength is that there's been a lot of solid research on how the practice of LMX uh, is related to all these organizational outcomes. There's, it's uh, fairly easy to study and um, we get lots and lots of information about how it really does uh, work. Now, there's always criticisms. Uh, one of the criticisms of this theory is that it inadvertently, support, inadvertently supports the development of privileged group in the workplace. It appears to be unfair and discriminatory, discriminatory by saying that, oh, there's in-groups and out-groups. But that's not what the theory is trying to promote. It's just saying, hey, this is the reality. Look at this. Um, nobody that uses this theory, thinks that having an out-group is a good idea. The goal is to bring everybody from the out-group into the in-group. And uh, another issue is the uh, accurately measuring the quality of the leader membership uh, exchanges is questions. Question, there's doubts that exist, like how do you actually do this? Um, and also uh, another difficulty is ways to improve uh, um, the, the, the exchanges is not really clear, especially if one person uh, isn't willing to make the uh, effort. So I find LMX to be extremely useful for analyzing different situations, and I hope you do too.